Hello everyone, welcome to The Lit Show. I'm your host, Jeremy Fee. I'm excited to give you my Genre Wars reading wrap-up book battle for February 2023. Previously, we established for the Genre Wars that in 2020, 2021, and 2022, for our monthly winners, General Fiction had four, Fantasy had 13, Mystery, Thriller, Crime, the MTC category had six, Horror had eight, Science Fiction had 11, Classics had one, and Nonfiction had five winners. In 2023, last month for January, Horror was the genre winner for the month. Our best read of the years, in 2020, we had General Fiction as the winner, 2021, Horror won, and in 2022, Science Fiction won. Let's see what our monthly winner is going to be for February. And we are building up to another end of the year book battle, building up ultimately to an end of the decade book battle. It's very exciting. Take a look at what I read for the month up on the screen. It's going to show 15 books, but the 16th book is the second book in the Hyperion series. I just went ahead and took the screenshot before I was finished reading the book. Here we go with the book battle. In general fiction, for this month in February, I read two books by Larry McMurtry. They are in a series for the last picture show. This is book four and five, finishing out the series. In book four, our characters from their small town in Texas have gotten pretty old. They've had kids, they've got grandkids, there's all this small town gossip, people have died, all kinds of stuff in the first three books. We've got the main character who was so depressed in the previous book, it was called Duane's Depressed, that was the title of the book. Book four is called When the Light Goes. So my goodness, there's another sad sounding title. It is up against book five, which is called Rhino Ranch. What was very bizarre to me was the book four really felt like an ending for the character and for the series and it was one of those situations where some people might get confused and think that Larry McMurtry was trying to give the main character a happy ending but I believe very much since the series has been a commentary on American society and small town life and in many ways a satire of how people behave that really readers should interpret that ending as sad and unfortunate for where the character ended up that me giving specific spoilers. So it is somewhat surprising that book five even exists, and then that the concept of book five takes the character back where you don't expect him to be going, and that involves rhinos, people in Texas trying to save the endangered rhinos by having Texas ranches for rhinos. I know that Larry McMurtry was doing something symbolic, something metaphorical, especially with one particular rhino and the protagonist, but it was bizarre. It was very bizarre for this book to exist, It was just more sadness, really. So I'm glad I read the series. Interesting characters. Great commentary on small town life in America and how people have evolved over the decades and how society has changed over time. Of these two books, I would go with book four and I kind of wish the series had just ended there, but oh well. Our next battle, we've got fantasy. In the fantasy genre, I read Hellbent by Lee Bardugo. This is the sequel to Lee Bardugo's book, Ninth House, which I read as part of a book club a couple of years ago. I was reminded that this book came out by Chris Reviews, who's got those great videos where she talks about books. She did a very nice discussion on this book. And also, of course, her great Instagram with the ferrets, if you're not already subscribed you should go check that out. A lot of the issues that I had with Ninth House occurred again with this book. When I read Ninth House, it was one of those issues where there were a lot of things about the book that I didn't like the way the author did the pacing and the way the author told the story out of time sequence in a way that I knew the author was just trying to hide something from the audience. And that's the only reason that things seem to be told out of order. And I didn't really appreciate it at the time, but the main character was really interesting and I did like the way the story ended. And there was 
was some intrigue left over for the sequel, so I told myself when the sequel comes out, I'm going to need to read it. Since I am in a book buying ban as part of the Read What You Own challenge, I used one of my free audiobook credits. I get one a month each month, and I use that. I listen to it as an audiobook. It is up against Appendix N, which is a wonderful collection of fantasy stories, a lot of classic fantasy by authors who inspired the creators of Dungeons and Dragons. Really great stories in the collection. They are so good by these classic fantasy authors that the book is going to win this battle. Clearly, the works of H.P. Lovecraft, the works of Robert E. Howard, and these other great fantasy authors, it trumps what Lee Bardugo put together. That brings us to the mystery thriller crime section. I continued the Tommy and Tuppence series by Agatha Christie. So this month we've got book three, which is called N or M. And it was really interesting. It had some Nazi spy intrigue in there for the characters to deal with. And then also book four in the series, which is By the Pricking of My Thumbs, which seemed like a really great concept. And I thought I was going to like it more than I did. Sadly, I feel like this series gets worse as it continues. And maybe some of it is just the way that Agatha Christie wrote the characters, she puts them in situations to where it feels kind of repetitive. It was really fun in the first book. I liked the characters more in the first book, but over time it feels repetitive, the way they behave and the things that they deal with. And also they're getting older, to where, I don't know, I hate to think I'm biased here, but they seemed more fun and adventurous when they were younger than after they married each other and settled down, I guess. Book five in the series will probably be one of my reads for March, March Mystery Madness. N or M is definitely advancing out of this category. Then we get to the horror genre. I read a book from NetGalley, so thank you to NetGalley and the publishers for the free advanced reading copy of the ebook. The book is out. It actually came out a few years ago in Spanish, and the English translation just came out this month. It is called Our Share of Night by Mariana Enriquez. It's really fascinating. Like, right from the beginning, it's got some great intrigue. The beginning of the story has what seems to be a father with his son and them going on the run. Clearly, they're being hunted down by people, and it's very interesting. I don't want to give you spoilers, but I do recommend the book. It is a fun read, though it's creepy and weird. Some people in the reviews criticized calling it horror, that in some ways it maybe feels more psychological, like a thriller suspense sort of story because of the way the characters are being chased, but I still have no problem thinking of it as horror. Then I got to a booktuber book, Juan Valencia, who is just amazing here on booktube, known as Plagued by Visions, wrote a book called Poking Holes, and it's shorter stories that are put together in the anthology. I heard several people talk about it here on YouTube, and I liked it. I thought it was really intriguing. It is considered extreme horror, and it's weird. So this is one of those books where I've got to give the disclaimer, it's not going to be for everyone. Like, I could tell reading it, some people will just think that it's a little too freaky odd out there, probably. But if you are a fan of weird, extreme horror, then you're going to love it. It is absolutely amazing. So out of these two books, I will advance Poking Holes by Juan Valencia. Let's get down to the bottom half of prelims. In science fiction, I read Hyperion. Hyperion is a book that I have heard multiple people say it's one of the best science fiction books ever. That's some high praise coming from people like Michael Everts from Fit to be Read and David Wiley. So I went in there thinking, whoo, this must be amazing. And they were right. They were absolutely right. The hype is real. One of the reasons that I like it is because it is set up with a similar sort of structure as the Canterbury Tales, where you have people who are going on a pilgrimage, there are religious, spiritual ideas in the story, and they are on a journey and they take turns telling their stories to one another. It's really neat to think of the classic Canterbury Tales, to think of that setup, but to put it in a sci-fi setting and to have a mysterious alien enemy, the Shrike. For science fiction, we've got the first book in the series up against the second book in the series, and I don't have a whole lot to say about the second book because, again, spoilers, I like to avoid giving you spoilers, but I like the way that the story can 
continued. I just feel like the first book was probably a better setup. The first book was just more enjoyable overall, though it continues nicely. I'm going to let the first book go ahead and win in this battle. Maybe March will see a continuation with the Hyperion stories. Then we get to our classic category, and for the classic category, I overdid it. I really read four books that would be considered classic, so two of them are going here, and two will go into the wild section here in just a little bit. All four of them are by Henry James. There was a reason I was researching Henry James, and that is because the short story that I wrote and was revising throughout the month to submit to try to get published in an anthology, I have a character that I named Henry James after the author Henry James. And I was familiar with these stories. I've read The Turn of the Screw. I've researched the author's life some, but I wanted to actually get through these stories. So here in the classic category, we've got The American by Henry James, which I thought was a wonderful example of a story of a fish out of water. I do really like that trope. Henry James wrote a lot of Americans trying to understand Europeans. So you've got an American protagonist. He goes over to Europe. He's made a bunch of money in America because, you know, that's a stereotype from back then, I guess. Those wealthy young Americans who are wanting to get married. And these stories also have that romance element to it. So we've got this rich American who goes to Europe and just doesn't understand the culture there. He doesn't get all the subtleties and the different ways that people interact and behave with each other. All the customs and traditions with family and marriage and all of that. I thought it was a very interesting story. I also have it up against the Wings of the Dove, which again, we're looking at some romance intrigue by Henry James. With this one, there's that nice symbolic idea with the title, the Wings of a Dove, able to put itself protectively around someone. As you go through the story knowing the title, you're looking to see who is the character who's going to be kind and maybe motherly or caring and help someone else. There's some interesting betrayal. There's some interesting drama that happens with this one, but ultimately, I enjoyed the American a lot more, so the American is getting the win here. And before I talk about the other two Henry James books, we've got our nonfiction category. In nonfiction, I read two books to help with writing this month. One of them is Revision and Self-Editing for Publication. It's a second edition by James Scott Bell. And the other one is Creating Character Arcs. There's a long subtitle for this one. It is by K.M. Wieland or Wyland, W-E-I-L-A-N-D. I found these books to be interesting. I found them to be helpful in looking at the two of them and making a comparison. I think writers would probably enjoy the one for creating character arcs more. So I'm going to go ahead and let that book win. But they're both useful. So if you are a writer, if you are an author, I think these books are worth your time. They come highly recommended from multiple people on AuthorTube. All right, in the wild category, the other two Henry James books for this month, we've got The Portrait of a Lady up against The Spoils of Poynton. These are both great books if you like this kind of genre. If you are not into the historical romance stories with fish-out-of-water characters, with people trying to understand other cultures and traditions and all the, the gossip and betrayals and things like that, then you might not like these stories. It's just I do enjoy that. I thought that the author did a nice job, but I was also approaching it from the point of view of trying to understand the psychology of the author and how he was creating the drama and the characters in it, so it was also an educational experience for me. This is a tough decision. This really is a tough decision because The Portrait of a Lady has good drama, good intrigue, but The Spoils of Poynton has a character that I really like, which is Mrs. Gareth. I don't know if the audience is supposed to like her, but she is very manipulative, and I felt like she did a great job of being that manipulative character who causes drama throughout the story. She's in a situation where because because she's a woman in Europe at the time, she doesn't have a lot of rights. Her son is getting the estate and all the property because her husband slash his father has died. And she's not going to have much. She wants all the nice treasures and art and everything that is there at the estate. And she is willing to manipulate a woman into trying to manipulate her son so that she can get that stuff while her son is really in love with a different woman. You can see how the drama is going to unfold. Very fascinating. 
I do recommend the story, like I said earlier, if you're into that kind of story. If you don't like that kind of intrigue, it's probably going to be boring for you and seem like a long, long book. Those two books, The Spoils of Poynton is getting the win and moving on to our quarterfinals. Up at the top, we've got When the Light Goes by Larry McMurtry, our small town Texas drama, realistic fiction. Up against Appendix N, an anthology of classic fantasy stories by authors that either inspired the creation of tabletop gaming, Dungeons and Dragons role playing, or similar authors, similar stories to those classic stories. Between these two, the book that I enjoyed reading more was a Appendix in. It's just more fun to read those classic fantasy stories than to read about poor Duane suffering, depressed as he ages. It is interesting commentary about our society that Larry McMurtry produces, but in this case, Appendix in is getting the win. Our next pairing has Agatha Christie's Tommy and Tuppence Book 3 N or M up against Juan Valencia's Extreme Horror Poking Holes. So we've got Mr up against horror and in this case I found the more enjoyable read to be the awkward weird extreme horror by Plague by Visions Juan Valencia so it's going to get the win. Moving on down to the bottom half of the bracket science fiction Hyperion one of the best science fiction stories ever told with an amazing setup intriguing characters with this kind of religious cultural mystery going on up against the American by Henry James a real Real classic story, historical, with romance and intrigue. Out of the two of these, it may just be my love of science fiction here that has me biased, but science fiction's gonna win. Hyperion is advancing. Moving on down to the last part of the bracket for this round, we've got the nonfiction book creating character arcs up against the spoils of Poynton by Henry James, and this time I'm gonna give the win to Henry James. The spoils of Poynton with that Mrs. Gary character gets the win it's moving on that will bring us to semifinals we can take a moment to celebrate the four books that have advanced we've got fantasy with appendix in collection of classic short stories then we have horror extreme horror with juan valencia's short story collection poking holes so that's two short story collections in the top half and then we've got hyperion in our science fiction category and the spoils of poynton classic historical romance from Henry James. Very interesting mix for our semifinals this time. Back up at the top, we've got to do a battle between Appendix N and Juan Valencia's book, Poking Holes. Two short story collections, which does make it somewhat easy to do the battle. In this case, I believe the collection of classic authors is going to overpower Juan Valencia. My apologies to Plague by Visions. Amazing book, great YouTube channel, but it's hard to beat a team up of authors authors like the Appendix N list. There's a reason that Gary Gygax put them all together in that list. Appendix N is going to finals, and let's see what it's going to be up against. Will it be Hyperion, or will it be the Spoils of Poynton? In this case, I've got to say, Mrs. Gareth is such an intriguing character. It almost gives the Spoils of Poynton the win, but Hyperion has a bunch of intriguing characters. Really, truly, the way one by one they tell their stories, like the Canterbury tells, while they are on their journey, it's really impressive. So Hyperion is getting to finals, which means we've got fantasy up against science fiction, Appendix N up against Hyperion. Ooh. I'm not going to give you a tie this month. I, it's tempting. I know I've got the wild card spots because we're still early in the year, but I will give you a definite winner. Between these two, I enjoyed Hyperion slightly more than Appendix N. So Hyperion wins as my best read of the month, and I highly recommend it. So let's go ahead and look at our overall chart for the year and go ahead and slot in Hyperion as our winner for February best read. and then. We can go back to our chart for genre wars to see the results. And that means science fiction is getting a win here in 2023, which makes science fiction almost the all-time winner for the decade. Fantasy is still up there with 13 wins, but now sci-fi has 12. That's bringing 
keeping it pretty close. And with Hyperion being as good as it is, who knows, it might be in line to be our 2023 best read of the year. You're just going to have to come back each month and find out what books it's going to end up against. Hope you've enjoyed the book battle. As always, here in the near future, I should have a video for you about my March reading. We've got March Mystery Madness. We've got March of the Mammoths going on. I might read the book for Roger's Cheap Book Club, where Michael K. Vaughn's buddy Roger has recommended a free book that you can get on the internet for a read each month. I also have some NetGalley books that I probably need to read before they come out. I think I've got a couple books that are coming out in April, so probably be a good idea to read those in March. I also have a million tags to do. I appreciate those of you who keep tagging me. I will get to those tags. It's just a busy time. Springtime is very busy, not just in general with school, but as a speech and debate coach, it's when we have a lot of our competitions. The students are doing very well. I'm very proud of my students. That's it for our video today. Hope you're doing awesome. Every day is a good day for a book talk or a book battle. Peace.